unable to connect to chat. That's not right. So I might be live, I might not, I don't know. I'm going to check right now on my iPad before I start. Come on. I don't know why it's not showing up on my computer. All right, so I'm live, it looks like. Thank you, Mark. Close that. Yes. Just giving it a second. I'm going to start in a minute here. What is going on? Oh, that's what I want. All right, I'm gonna start in about two minutes. So bear with me, I'm gonna run out and grab something. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna start now that I know that it's live. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So last time we did a drawing and I was just working with like pen and paper. So a lot of you could easily follow and work while I'm working. This time I'm going to be working mainly with my iPad and so I'm just trying to think it pro it might work better for you to kind of watch and then try it out later but maybe you can work along with me if you have an iPad the principles I'm using they'll work with anything if you have a, a computer with Photoshop you can use this stuff um, so that's something to keep in mind um, Another thing, let me get rid of that for a second. So I'll explain, because I work digitally sometimes, but I generally don't. I work traditionally. I used to work digitally more, and I have like two different types of work that I do. So I, when I went to school, I went to school for illustration, and I kind of thought, 
that I'd be doing like editorial work more and um, album covers. Like I have done that stuff, but I thought that's what I'd be doing almost all of. And it turns out that I, I kind of live halfway in between that and the fine art world. And so illustration, if for those of you that don't know, is basically fine art lives on walls. It's like paintings and sculpture and things like that that you, you put in your house or in a museum for decoration, right? Or galleries. Illustration lives in magazines and it lives in books and it lives in advertisements, album covers. It lives basically anywhere but hanging it on your wall. And so most illustrators have kind of adopted digital means because it just it's just much easier to work that way. And you don't need to have a, a physical piece of art at the end of it. You just need to have a digital file for the person to be able to print however they're going to print it. And so because of that, you don't need a physical piece of, of art. It's, it's just easier to work digitally. And so when I'm hired to do illustration work, I generally will start traditionally like this and do the line work. And then I will scan this at a high resolution, bring it into my iPad and mess around with it, see what, where I want to go with it. And, um, and sometimes after that, what I'll do is I'll try it out on the paper. If I, what I did, I liked. And so what I'm going to kind of show you today is this is a squeaky chair. So I apologize. Two different ways that I work. And so one of, when I work digitally and one of them is where I will finish a piece digitally and end up with a digital file that I'd be sending to a client to work with. The other way is using digital tools to try things out before you commit to them on paper, which I highly recommend. I'll show you some of, I've actually pulled some illustration work that I've done and I thought I'd show it to you guys. And I can kind of explain how much of it is digital and how much of it's traditional before we start. So this one here, this magazine, Dispatch Magazine, is a Portland, Maine magazine. I work for them a few times. They actually don't exist anymore. I did this. I want to make sure that you can see it. Okay. I did this piece for them for an article about prison food. And you can see like the collaged pieces in the clothing of and the hat of the prison inmates that was done dig, uh, digitally I scanned like newspapers and flyers and things like that and then I just collage them digitally this is a photograph of like a you know like a menu at a cafeteria that I collaged in all the line work is done traditionally so and like kind of the background is a mix of digital and traditional so this is like a really good example of a piece that's pretty much 50 50 where I drew about a half of this brought it in and then finished the second half um, on my iPad or I might have done this one in Photoshop I can't remember let's see what the next one is this is a good example of a piece that I did almost entirely digitally and so you can see the colors are like you, you really, it would be hard to imitate these colors in a traditional way and have them work this well. They would probably get a little bit muddy. Um, and so the beauty of, of digital work is when you paint or use some tools, they can get pretty muddy pretty quick and you can't go over them too many times because I mean, it just, the paper only holds so much wet medium. Whereas with digital tools, you can just go to town and try things out. And if it doesn't work, try something else out and um, keep doing that until you've got something that you're happy with. So this is a piece that I did that was almost all digital. 
Let's see. This is a magazine, Current Affairs, that I did some illustrations for. And I did this piece um, about, uh, it was done for an article about Twitter. This is another one where all the line work is traditional. I scanned it in and did like a lot of the collage work in the background um, digitally. So this is a kind of a half and half piece. And then one last piece that I did for um, Hohe Luft, I guess. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's a German magazine, philosophy magazine. They wanted me to do a portrait of um, Occam, who's Occam's razor. You may have heard of that. Um, so I did a portrait of him. This is almost entirely traditional, except just this one piece of his um, clothing I did by um, scanning a chalkboard, believe it or not. And then I put that, uh, I collaged that in for his clothes. And so, and they wanted a black and white piece. So I don't generally love working in just black and white, but sometimes when you're working for clients, that's what they want for their magazine or for, for their project. So that's what I had to do in that case. I'm like so nervous that I'm going to be talking and then this this will fail and I'll think it's live and it's not. But it's saying it's live still and I can't see your chat so I'm just going to keep going and hope for the best. So last week, I'm hoping that um, some of you, well, let me fix that. I'm hoping that some of you are watching this week that were here last week because I want to continue on with this piece and show you what I could do, what I would do with it digitally. And um, if you haven't seen that, you can still watch this and then go back and watch that one or, you know, whatever order, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you can watch this live, go watch this other one and then come back and rewatch this. Um, but what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna, fo well, what I normally would do is, so I've got to the point now where I like the line work and I like this photograph, okay? But I don't think this is finished yet. I think it needs more. And so, but I'm really, I'm happy with the line work, right? And so I don't want to mess it up. And a good way to do that is to photograph it. Let me get rid of that. I'll photograph the work and bring it, that picture or scan it and then bring that picture into my iPad and then start to mess around with it on my iPad to see what I want to do with it before I commit to it on paper. And so, as you can see, I've already scanned it and put it here, or photographed it, I think. Yeah, I photographed this one. And I've put it here. And what else, what else I've done is I photographed the, the, this photograph separately so that I can still move it around if I'd like. And that way, that's not committed either yet at this point. And if I want to, I can, um, you know, still cut a piece of it off pretty easily. Um, and, and basically move around with it. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take the time now to go through this piece. And, and we'll try some things out to see what, what works and what doesn't. And then I'm not going to do this during this live stream, but after I get this to the point where I'm happy, I can t take the image and put it in front of me and take the original and then copy what I've done on the, on the iPad um, traditionally. You just gotta be careful that you're not using tools digitally that, don't, that are hard to replicate traditionally. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so I'm basically ready to get started. Before I do, quickly, like last week, um, I know we're all in like a weird position right now with the COVID-19 and what's going on. A lot of people are still working because they have essential jobs, so they're thankful for that, I'm sure. A lot of us are in positions where our jobs maybe aren't consider uh, considered essential. Um, I know in Maine, where I live, the... Um, governor just two days ago basically um, ordered that all non-essential businesses close and some uh, but somehow Starbucks is still open so I guess they consider that essential I don't know um, but I'm happy that they do the the point I'm trying to make is 
if you do have a job that's essential and you know you're going to be making money, you know, you could definitely do your part to help out um, small businesses that are maybe non-essential in some ways, maybe buy a gift card or, um, you know, just do your part because there's people that are really going to be struggling over the next few months for sure, trying to build their business back up and maybe not have money for a while. So just keep that in mind, especially if you know you're not going to be that affected financially. I have put a pay, uh, PayPal information in the description of this video so that if you feel like if you're not being affected and you feel like you want to give a dollar or two because you enjoyed the lesson and you got something out of it, you're welcome to do that. If you're not in the position to do it, no big deal. But the, the PayPal information is there for those who want to and can. Um, the next thing I wanted to say is what did I, I just lost my train of thought. That's so annoying. Maybe I'll think of it while I'm working, but let's let's get started because that's what we're here to do. And I desperately tried to find a way to this camera's annoying me. Maybe I can put it up here. I desperately tried to find a way to make it so that my iPad screen went right onto like I could mirror the screen into this live stream and I know that there's a way to do it. I'm just not that great with technology, so I didn't know how, and so I'm taking a video of my iPad screen, which I know is not the best way to translate this, but you can see it pretty well, and and so we'll, we'll go from here. And so what we're doing this time with this is we're just trying to try some things out to see what we like to do, or what we're going to like to do, and then in the goal being that we're going to take what we're doing here on the iPad and put it on the paper that we worked on. So we want to make sure we're doing things that you're able to do traditionally. And unfortunately, so on this piece here, I've used some vine charcoal in and some pencil. And so what that means is it limits me a little bit. Gen it limits me. I can't now. I can't really add watercolor on the cup on the top of this because it'll just become such a muddy mess. And so you're better off not adding any anything like that until you've tested things out. And so I would just go with the inked line work, and then take a photo and then start messing around here. And then I have another image I'd like to do and just kind of finish it out digitally so you can see what that would look like if you're just doing an illustration that's going to live digitally and you don't have to worry about having a final piece. I hope what I'm saying is making sense at all. So what I would do, the first thing I would do here is I'm going to pretend that I didn't use the, um, the vine charcoal already and I would think about how I could add a little bit of color to the face. And so as you can see I've got things on layers so I've got the photograph on a separate layer so I'm going to add another layer here and procreate. This is the um, the program I'm using and I'm going to set that layer to multiply because multiply is like a a see-through layer so if I use normal I'll show you what normal means and then I pick a color I'll use that color and then I'm going into painting to pick like watercolor brush now if I am use normal you can see that it's like going to cover over and I don't want that. I want to be able to see through it like watercolor actually acts. So that's why I'm going to set it to multiply. So now I'm adding the color, but you can still see through the, the work. So I'm going to erase that and start over. So I'll just see if I can see this. Add a little watercolor in. And then maybe experiment with the color a little bit. I don't really like that yellow. It's a little bit, well, it's not really a great color for skin. So maybe I'd like it like that and then a little bit less saturation. So right there, I like, I like what's happening there. And then I can toggle back and forth between that and without that to see the difference. And you can see it kind of 
separates his head from the background now if I add a little bit a little bit of a light watercolor wash right and um, and so if this was going to live as just a digital file then um, I wouldn't have to worry about the fact that I already used vine on this so I like that so let's see what we could add next I probably put a little bit of color in his lips too to separate them from the rest of it and I would add like a I'll just use bright red for now and then I'll I'll tone it down after I'm gonna use a pencil you but obviously you use whatever tools you want and whatever tools you think you can recreate traditionally it's gonna go pretty messy because that's how I'm, I'm gonna end up doing it when I put it on paper I'm gonna it's gonna be messy so I'm not really that worried about it and obviously I'm not crazy about that color so I would tone it down quite a bit maybe make it a little bit more orange take some of the saturation out and then lower the um, opacity on the layer maybe down to something like that and so I could add, I could maybe use when I go to to replicate this traditionally I could maybe use some watercolor to do this but more like more than likely I would use um, like a pastel or a colored pencil or something um, but I do like that and so where else would I go okay so now I'm thinking like what would I it's still kind of blank to me like this paper maybe to you looks filled but I like to really fill my pages so um, I'm gonna take the image the photograph off right now and see what else I could do because maybe I can do like some back people in the background use a pencil a light gray pencil maybe a little bit darker than that and I don't know where I'm gonna put them I'll put them up here for now what's going on oh I'm on the same layer as the lips which is why it's not showing up so I want a separate layer you want to do everything on separate layers that way after you've done them you can toggle back and forth between seeing it with the thing that you've just done and without and sometimes you'll find that what you just did you don't care for and so you'll undo it which is the beauty of digital work which is why so many people are using it nowadays so I'm gonna do like just a really rough head right it doesn't it really doesn't matter because this is just gonna be like a background um, background shape or something it's not really um, a foreground piece of this puzzle not really crazy about where I put them that's the cool thing about um, digital you can move people around wherever you want I hope my audio is okay I'm gonna find out a lot after this stream so let's see I kind of like in there where he's kind of going into the face of the person let's see if you can even see that he's not that dark so I'll duplicate the layer that'll darken him and I'll actually duplicate it again and then I'll go in even further and darken parts of them I really wish I could have just mirrored the screen because it just would make this you'd be able to see it more so now I'll kind of go toggle back and forth in between seeing what that looks like with and without and decide if I like it and I'm gonna keep it for now I'm gonna add another person maybe I'll do like a red a red person with red ink so I'll be using a red pen tool next to this person and I'll just do something really quick maybe this person is a um, Maybe this person is a female and I'll use some yellow and do maybe colored pencil hair or something that's not the right thing multiply okay so so we're adding in some colored pencil hair on this 
and then maybe a little bit of orange colored pencil into this. Hmm. I'm not sure if I like the red right now, so I will probably tamp the red down a little bit, take some saturation out, maybe even lighten it. And then I can use a, a colored pencil instead of a pen for that. Let's see, so there's with it, there's without. So I'm just trying things out. Like that's what this is all about. You're not, you've not committed anything to paper yet. And this is really important, especially if you've, um, if you've done some line work that you're really happy with, the last thing you want to do is ruin it, right? And so to try things out digitally like this is huge. So now I'm, I put the photograph back. I'm going to move it. Whoops. Move the photograph, not the person I just drew. Maybe I want the photograph there instead. Kind of like that, where the photograph kind of overlaps with the person. And what this means, if I end up doing this on, on traditionally, I'm going to have to use pen because colored pencil is not going to work over a top, the top of a, a glossy photograph. Um, marker would probably work. Let's see. I'll get a little bit of black pencil in here. And I don't know, maybe add more of like a, like I messed up even more over here than I actually did, right? I kind of like that. Put a little bit more of black here. And then what else would I tend to do here? I think what else I would do is another cool thing. All right, this is what I want to show you too. So I, you can add images into this. So what I've done is I've scanned tons of different things that I can use for collage work and um, text and all kinds of things. And so I'll bring this in for instance. This is just a piece of paper that I had worked on and wrote some text. Let me bring it to the front. Some text, there's some blue marker smudges on it. And so I'm gonna erase the blue marker smudges for now just to get it down to the text. Set that to multiply so the white goes away and you can just see the text. Maybe I want to add some text in the background of this piece. I can kind of move this around and see, see where I'd like to add it if I do. I kind of like it there. I wish it looked better on this screen. This stupid camera stinks. Um, and so let's see what else I have. I have so much other things that I've scanned in and, and this has taken time. Like over time I've scanned all sorts of things um, into here. Okay, so when I, this is a good example here. This is the lettering I used for the Tyler the Creator cover. I wrote Igor down on a, a couple different times on pieces of paper and then I brought them into the piece and started messing around with where I wanted to put, put it you know, before I commit on paper. Um, also, I have, um, let's see, well, just things like this. Like I have full pieces of paper that I've scanned that have just different types of smudges and things like that with um, pastel. And if I set that to multiply, get rid of the white, now I can kind of maybe move this around. I like maybe that right there on his face and get rid of the rest of it. Got a little bit of extra color in his face, right? And then I think this piece needs a little bit of blue. So I'm going to add another layer, uh, set it to multiply, bring in a blue color. I've had these colors down here, which are colors I use a lot of, um, and that I have traditional tools that match all of these colors. And so, uh, let's see, what could I use the blue for? Well, let's try making his eyes blue. I've got some blue color pencils, so I could do that. I could go into color his eye a little bit. Color both the eyes. So there you go, that gives it a nice pop of color, some blue. Um, another option is, 
maybe some blue. Oops, I said it to I keep forgetting to set the layers to multiply. So some maybe some blue sunglasses. And I can kind of toggle back and forth to see if I like the sunglasses or the eyes better blue or both. So taking it out from the eyes to the sunglasses. I think I like it in the eyes better, but that's the cool thing you can do um, digitally. And so let's say I decided this piece, it, you know, I, I would continue working on this, but if I decided this piece, I'm happy with how it's starting to look. There's the traditional version. So what I would do is I would set this up in front of me up here. I would get out my watercolor and my color pencils that I'm gonna need to do this with. And then I would just try to match what I've done digitally. And beautifully, it would be, you get good too at, um, you start to get a lot better after you do this enough at like figuring out how to translate um, a digital tool or something you've done digitally traditionally. And the cool thing is I did, I used to do this a lot more. So I used to use this um, technique a lot when I was really learning a lot more about composition. And I was just nervous about my drawings and I was nervous that I was gonna ruin a piece. And so I always try things out digitally to see if they were gonna work first before I would put them on the paper. And over time, my intuition has become a lot better and I just, I kind of know what's gonna look good and what isn't a lot more. And so I, I don't have to use the digital tool as much, but this is a great way to get comfortable and more confident in your decision-making and you can see what's gonna work and what isn't. And over time, you'll probably realize that, that this isn't necessary anymore, but it's giving you a good way to try things out and be a lot more experimental without having to worry that you're gonna ruin a piece, right? Another thing, so I'm gonna go to another piece that I had started, which is here. So this is another piece that I had just started and, um, and I also did this other piece yesterday, I'll show you, which I'm not done yet, but I've got some collage, like a collage a shirt and a piece, but I still have to add more to this piece. But this piece is, well, I chose this one here because it is just pretty much line work at this point. And I'm gonna show you basically what I would do if I wanted to finish a piece digitally. So let's say I just want, I'm not gonna worry that I have to translate the, the tools now because the piece is going to end up as a digital file that I would just send to a client. And so now I can be a lot um, less careful about using tools that I'm gonna have to try to recreate later on traditionally. I can just do whatever I want. I can try out pretty much any of the tools in here because they don't, um, well, it doesn't really matter what, what happens. I'm not gonna have to recreate it. And so the first thing I would do is I'd add some color to the whole thing. So I'm gonna set this to multiply. I'm gonna set a nice background color and color the whole piece in like that. Maybe tamp it down just a little bit. And then I want some nice white to pop. So I'm gonna erase that color from the eyes. Oops, get a bigger eraser so it doesn't take forever. And this, hold on, can't do two things at once, I don't know why. So right away you can see the eyes pop now nicely. Maybe I'll do it with the shirt too, give them a white shirt. And so if you see illustration work that I've done that's like on album, like I'm just gonna say use the Tyler the Creator album cover because that's like, one of my most well-known um, illustration pieces. Um, this is how I worked. I, I drew Tyler um, out with pen, scanned it, brought it in, and then I started adding color this way, digitally. And this is cool. So you can see, um, makes his shirt and his eyes pop when the, the background color is just a little bit different. 
And I like to take it, tone it down even more so that it's barely different than the eyes in the shirt, maybe somewhere like around there. And so what would I add next? Uh, I really just can go crazy. This is not like a, this person is someone that I just drew kind of from my head. And so it's not a real person. So I don't have to tr worry about it looking like anybody specifically. So maybe I want to add a, mus a mustache, right? So I can just try it out. Maybe it won't work and it won't look good on this person, but I'm going to try it. So nice, some nice pen. I'm using like a, the digital ink bleed pen tool right now in Procreate. Procreate is such a great program if you don't if you don't own it, I would highly recommend it as a digital tool for beginners because for a couple reasons. The first reason, it's incredibly cheap. You can get Procreate for like six or seven dollars on the iPad Pro. The only thing is you have to have the iPad Pro um, and an, an Apple Pencil for, for you to use it. I guess you don't need the Apple Pencil. You could use like a regular stylus or other tool, but um, the point is, if you have an iPad Pro already, Procreate's a very reasonably priced tool, and then you can work, do digital work that's just almost as good quality as Photoshop. I actually like using Procreate way more than Photoshop because it's easier to use, um, and the tools are built in, and it's just, I, I mean, there's just, there's no program that even comes close to matching it, in my opinion. So I added a mustache and I toggle back and forth. Do I like the mustache? Yeah, I think I do. Whoops. So I'm going to leave it. And then I, I think with this person, I really want to emphasize the eyes. And right now they're not emphasized, even though I set, um, I, I made it so that eyes are whiter than the rest of the page. It's maybe you can see if I zoom in. Um, but I really want to have the eyes even more emphasized. So I'm going to add in some, I'm going to darken them. I'm going to use a pencil. And a lot of the stuff I'm doing here, even though I'm going to finish this piece um, digitally, I could easily go back into the traditional piece and um, and do this stuff again too. And I, I may, whoops. Bit of a highlight there. Can't have an eye without a highlight. That's the best part. Adding that. I'm just gonna add some darkness more around the middle. Highlight. All right. So right there, you can see the eyes are already starting to. It brings more attention to them when I darken them. I think I want to darken around them more. So I'm gonna. Um, Let's see, I'll import a photo of some. Here we go. There's a, this is just a page that I, I smudged some um, vine chart all on. And I'm going to bring it in, set it on multiply, and then kind of put it around the eyes. And then I'll just erase the edges where you can still see the page. So I kind of darkened the eyes a little bit there. And then I'll probably erase the vine charcoal in the whites of the eyes because I don't really like the way it looks. That way they pop even more. So let's see, maybe darken that even more by doubling it. And you can see, um, take some of the color out. So you can see that this is a great, great way to um, bring attention to the eyes more by adding like sh shading around them, um, especially when you haven't done it in other spots that really makes them stand out. Um, I think with his hat, I'm going to try to put a shadow underneath the, the rim. And so I'll use like a pencil here. And I accidentally erased a piece of it there. Here we go. And I'll just start using this. The cool thing about the Apple Pencil is um, 
you know, you can use it like a real pencil. So when you draw with the pencil straight up, it makes lines. And then when you um, put it on its side, it's like shading. So if you haven't tried one out yet, I definitely recommend them. So I'm just going to put some black underneath the rim here of the hat. Um, see what see what that looks like um, for a shadow because the light's coming from above and so obviously there would be a, a shadow underneath the brim. I really hope I'm explaining myself well and what I'm saying is making sense. I, I always think of myself as someone who is okay at communicating but maybe I'm totally wrong and everyone's lost. <laughs> I hope not. I'm just gonna continue shading. I'll have a joke for you if you want to hear a joke while I'm drawing. Maybe you've heard it. How does it go? What it? What is the difference between? Um. What? How does it go? What is the difference between Dubai? And Abu Dhabi, the people, wait, how does it go? The people in Dubai, no, I'm going to, I'm going to mess this up. Oh, the people in Dubai don't watch the Flintstones and the people in Abu Dhabi do. That's the joke. It's pretty stupid. I can't believe I even told it, um, but it's kind of funny. And if you're really young and you don't get that joke, you'd have to watch the Flintstones. To, to understand it. So there you go. I think that I like that. I got some shadow underneath the hat. Um, I think I want to add a, a photograph to this piece and I've scanned a bunch of different photographs um, in here. Where, um, I've got tons of photographs to work with and different um, reference work that I've been working with as you can see. Um, but I was looking, oh yeah, so this page here. So I'm gonna use this photograph of a woman sitting on the bench in this piece. And I'm gonna put it over here on this side of the page. Maybe line up there with his eyes. I like that because there's some lines in this photograph that are pointing this way and so if I line it up with his eyes it's like pointing right at his eyes and that brings even more focus to them um, which I like I think I think he needs a lot more going on in his face so I would put um, maybe some stubble with some pen and I'm gonna do this a quick way that Normally I would take the time and draw this double all out, but because we're doing this live on a live stream, I'm not going to, I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to draw like a little patch of stubble and then I'll just duplicate it and then kind of move it and then, whoops, and then I'll duplicate that and I'll move that and then I'll duplicate all of that and move it, oops. So just to kind of, to go quicker, normally I wouldn't do this because then you just end up with all these patches that are exactly the same. Normally I would take the time to draw out all of the stubble, put some on his neck and let's see. Darken it, maybe put double it. erase the, the stuff that's kind of off. Not that worried about it though. Right, so that was a quick way of doing stubble. It's not the way I normally would, but it, I think it's fine for what we're doing here. And then um, I also got some on his lip, so I'm gonna take get rid of that. I think I would also add some color to this one's lips and um, I'll do the same. I'll get some red going. I just use, like this isn't the color I'm going to end up using. I'm just filling it in with this color because it's, it's bright, it's easy to see and then I'll lighten it quite a bit 
Um, I use that technique a lot just because it's just easier to, to paint with bright colors that are easy to see. And then I can just take the opacity way down. There we go. I probably even take some of the color out of it too. Cool. And I've also, oh, so something else I've done is, like I said, I, I've got all these scans of different pages with lead texts and charcoal smudges and lettering and all sorts of things that I might be able to add in the background of pieces. I've also got um, some, this page that's all like watercolor and different techniques. And so I could um, set this to multiply and now Maybe I want to put some watercolor in his face for the for the digital piece. I don't know. Maybe not. Take like get rid of the rest of it. So maybe something like that. Um, I probably erase what's over here on the side a little bit and then I'd probably take the opacity down so it's more subtle but something like that I don't I don't think is too bad and then I'm going to add some lettering or just some some words into this piece and I think probably kind of going across the face I do that quite a bit. It's something I like to do. And so I'll just write it over here on the side and then I'll add it in. Oh no. You probably can hear that buzzing. And that went all morning, that awful buzzing noise. And I was so worried that it was going to continue through my live stream. And then about an hour before the live stream or a half hour before the live stream, it stopped. So I was all excited, like, oh good, I'm not going to have that awful noise. And guess what? It came back. Maybe you can't hear it, but I'm assuming you probably can because it's pretty loud. Let's just ignore it. That's not much I can do about it. I don't even know what it is. It's this awful buzzing noise that's coming from outside. Um, I live right next to a marina where there's like all sorts of giant boats. And so there's noises that come from that sometimes. I'm assuming that's where this is coming from. But I do apologize. There's just not much I can do about it. Um, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, I was going to write some lettering. So I got a pencil and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, I'm going to write literally what I'm saying. And it's going to be almost, if not completely illegible. And some of the letters will be darker, some will be lighter, which is totally fine. And then I'll put the lettering up in the f here, see if I like it, right? Maybe there. That's the cool thing about digital. You can move things, you can resize things to see what you, what you like. Um, people ask me all the time about like the, the lettering that's in the back of my, or the background of a lot of my work. Um, and like, what does it say or what does it mean? Oftentimes the lettering and the words are really like nonsense and they don't mean anything. And it's just a way to add like texture and interest to the back. Um, not always like when I do a piece for, um, a commission piece, a portrait, I will ask like, Oh, you, this is a portrait of your brother. Like what's your brother's favorite. Oh, thankfully that buzzing stopped. What's your brother's favorite music or, or musician? And, and maybe I can use lyrics in the back or something like that so that the words actually fit the piece. But sometimes I'll just like literally write whatever I want or anything. Like I could just be watching TV while I'm drawing and just be like writing what I'm hearing. And so that happens a lot. Let's see. So I'm, I'm going to try to combine all of the stuff that I've added onto one layer by just closing it up like this. And then I can erase it and then put it back. Okay. So look, you can see what I've added. Makes a big difference. 
right? Oops. And so if I wanted to, I could bring that drawing back up here and start adding some of this stuff to the real drawing. Um, you just want to be careful what order you do it in. So if you are going to add this watercolor, you definitely want to add that before you add all of this like smudged vine charcoal because you can't you can't put watercolor on top of the vine charcoal, but you can put vine on top of watercolor. So you just want to be careful with, with the order that you do things in. This this piece I think needs a little bit of color. Um, so maybe I'll add some, some of this blue. I have a nice, uh, um, this blue here that I use, I use this, this color blue in a lot of my pieces because I have um, a Prismacolor marker that that's that color that I love using and also a colored pencil so um, depending on on how I'm going to be adding it I'll use one of those tools maybe I'll just use some uh, the side of the pencil here so if I were to add this to the traditional piece later I would do it with a colored pencil I don't know I don't know if that's even where I would like to put the blue but, um, you know, I might want to put it on the other side of the hat. Probably not, though. I liked it kind of over there better. Um, maybe add a little bit more of um, a purple or a red. By doing like that. Um, set that one to normal. I like that splash of color too. So you can kind of see like the beauty of, of digital work obviously is that you can just try things out and sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. Um, but it really starts to build your confidence when, when you start seeing like the more, <clears throat> the more I worked with Procreate and with my iPad, I, again, <clears throat> excuse me, the more I started to realize that the decisions I was making were almost always pretty good decisions and it gave me more confidence to stop using the iPad and work traditionally way more because I, I was confident that what I was laying down on paper was going to be what I wanted to do ultimately. Um, and But sometimes I still use the iPad. There's nothing wrong with um, digital work. I will say like, okay, so I just saw something I want to add. I think the collar needs like to be like emphasized a little bit. So I would darken or I would thicken that line. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, ah, oh, that's so annoying. I hate when I do that. I shouldn't have, I got like sidetracked though by my work. Um, the, Oh, this is so frustrating. I had like a point that I wanted to make and now I can't even think about it. The The main point I was making is just the fact that um, working digitally. Oh, okay, so I know what I wanted to say. Sorry about that. Um, I, I When I went to school for illustration, like I kind of, and I still kind of feel this way. I kind of hated digital work in some ways because... It was just so fake looking like most people work digitally and you can tell like you can just look at it and it yo, okay that's digital work I know and um, it seems like lifeless or something because there's it's perfect a lot of people do their digital work perfectly all their circles are perfect circles um, all their lines are perfectly straight and and it feels like you, it, you lose like the human aspect to artwork because there's no there's no mistakes or um, there's, you can't see the person's hand in the work. And so like I kind of made it my goal to if I'm going to work digitally that I want to make it so that uh, the person looking at the work really can't tell the difference between my traditional work and my digital work. Right. And and so I managed to kind of kind of do that. There's still. I think there's still tells when you work digitally. Um, but the, the point is I, I made it a goal of mine to make digi digital work that I liked and I hate digital work. So it was like kind of a challenge to make 
to make work that that I, even I enjoy. And so that's why I I, t- I took the time to um, to learn how to use the iPad and, the pro- and procreate and figure this out and figure out how I can use this to my advantage. And so I hope I kind of showed you that today, like what you can do um, with with finalizing a piece digitally, but also with trying things out digitally. And then once you once you get the image the way you want it, you can translate that. You can take that and put it onto paper. And so there's so much beautiful things you can do um, with an iPad or with a computer that can help out your artwork and give you more confidence that, that you definitely shouldn't um, at least give it a try, especially if you already have an iPad. Like Procreate is literally $6. Like it's it's well worth that little amount of money for um, what, what tools you get from it. Um, and so I think next time I'm going to do a collage lesson for next Thursday. I think I'll do a live stream where I'll work with a lot more collage and it won't be digital. We'll be working traditionally and um, uh, it'll be like how to combine drawing with collage because that's kind of what I do. That's my specialty, I guess. My style is combining drawing and collage work. And so we're going to make something that's like half and half, half drawing, half collage. And so if you're going to join that live stream and you're going to want to have fun and, and follow along and, and do artwork while with me, I would recommend having some paper, some pens, um, maybe some other tools like pencils and colored pencils. Um, but also you're going to want like magazines or f- old photographs or anything that you that you don't mind cutting up and pasting to your your artwork. And I'm really excited to, to do this next week because I think what will happen is I'm hoping we get a lot of people that will make really cool collages and we can maybe put them up on Instagram and, and use a hashtag so we can look at what other people did during the lesson. And so next week will be more of a traditional lesson. Um, again, I, I don't want to harp on, I did put my PayPal information in the description of this in the last live stream, just in case you are in the position and you don't, and you think that this was, um, you got something out of this lesson and you, and you think, oh, I could, I could spare a dollar or two and you could send it over to, to um, show appreciation. If you're not in the position, not a big deal, but it's there. Um, yeah, so I'm really, I'm really looking forward to next week's lesson. And I'm, I'm hoping I just get better and better in front of a camera and, and doing these live streams. It's not necessarily very easy, but I just, I like to try to share with what I know. And, um, and so I hope, hope to see all of you back next time. Bye-bye.